So in in um, your uh, your neo architecture um, that y'all designed at Rex, um, y'all took a, a different approach, um, and you talked about in that talk um, having hard real time determinism. Um, what was kind of the strategy? Are there any um, kind of like things you could point out um, specifically in the processor architecture that allowed you to be able to do that in contrast to something like Itanium? Yeah, so probably the, the biggest element that um, stands out but also vastly simplifies everything is the fact that we um, went to a purely uh, scratch pad based uh, memory system. So in terms of what would normally be, you know, L1, L2, you know, caches and, and uh, traditional processors, rather than having the TLBs and MMU and all of these extra pieces of logic, which take up a lot of area, a lot of power, a lot of design time and complexity um, uh, and, and add latency and, and, and such. Um, uh, basically, think of you've got your L1 cache, but we just rip out all of that and you're just directly accessing that memory, the physical addresses uh, for, for those pieces. So at the individual core level, it was, you know, uh, and, and I think a lot of how we talked about it to most people, just think of it as being a you know, simple risk core uh, to start off with. Um, in reality, it's VLIW, but VLIW got such a bad rap that you can still, it still meets the definition of risk. Um, and, you know, most people don't actually care how instructions are, are generated for it if, if they're not responsible for doing anything related to it. Right. But, you know, had, you know, a 64 bit ALU, uh, IEEE 754 2008 compatible 64 bits uh, uh, floating point unit. Um, and then, you know, two separate register files for, for each of those. And then the scratch pad memories, which were divided into multiple banks. And really the, the VLIW, the, the instruction word that used to control these elements, enabled you to be doing an ALU op, a floating point op, um, as well as two load and store operations simultaneously all in, in, in a single, single cycle. And, you know, at that basic core level, that sounds... You know, pretty simple. It's it's um, you know no more difficult than than and in a lot of ways a lot easier than programming you know computers pre 1985 ish with when with the pro proliferation of caches like mm -hmm. you just directly access the memory system and it happens that a single one of those cores had more you know main memory just embedded within that core than a lot of the the early computers that uh, probably a lot of people listening to this this. Uh, podcast uh, uh, grew up with in, in the you know early 80s, 90s. So, um, but yeah, we expanded. So the, the core difference is that just having that direct access to memory drastically simplifies. And the benefit from us from on the software layer is because you have that exact deterministic uh, uh, operation for, for every single instruction you're, you're doing all, all of your memory accesses, take a, a you know, predetermined um, number of cycles, number of, of nanoseconds. Um, uh, when you're actually generating, when you have your compiler and the compiler is trying to, to generate a, a control flow graph for your program, um, it knows exactly when data is going to be where and that, you know, there's not uh, the, these, the potential that the hardware is actually going to be doing something in secret and there's going to be a stall that needs to be inserted for God knows how many cycles.